we have Leonora Shelfo and Nancy Ann Ritter joining us. They are the bathroom girls in Scream the Original. And thank you guys for doing this. This is really cool. Of course. Yeah. I thank wanna... you for having us. You're welcome. We have a bunch of people who are very excited for this. So, And a bunch oh, of people good. Have questions for you guys, too. Cool. Well, let's do it. All right. So we have the first, well, for you guys, um, what like new movies do you guys have that's coming up right now that you guys are making? You go first, Leonora, and then I'll go. No, you go. Or you want me to go first? <laughs> okay. I'm turning you guys volume up one second. Okay. Okay. One moment. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Leonora, I love your wall back of your whole family. Thank you. It's amazing. Um, so, Le so Leonora and I have a few films together that we're in uh, and then that I'll talk about and then a few of my own. Uh, the one, So filmmakers have really been enjoying casting me and Leonora in their films, not to play our bathroom girl characters, but uh, as playing different characters. So one that we're in together uh, is called The Woodmen that's free on Tubi right now. And we play lovers, Felicity and Faye. And uh, and then we're going to be in the sequel to The Woodmen called The Forge Creek Recordings with Michael Berryman, which is really exciting, L.C. Holt. And so those same two characters, Felicity and Faye. And then those same lover girl characters can also be seen in Tahoe Joe 2 mm -hmm. and Tahoe Joe 2 is right now out and it's still being rolled out on on an app called POV horror app um and and then she and I all, Leonora and I also have another film called The Girl 2 uh, we play nurses in a mental institution, and it's kind of a crazy cape comedic caper of a film. Mm -hmm. And Leonora and I get to play really fun, really. Th we have big parts in that movie, and uh, and that's a fun cast. And then um, I've got a film that's coming out in film festivals first called The Only Ones. That um, one's really good. And and I have a big part in that one, and yeah. then one called Blood and and Breakfast that'll come out I think in the fall. Yeah. Um, and um about the pizza kill. Oh, and then a what what a new movie I haven't filmed yet called Killer Pizza that's going to be <laughs> shooting up in Buffalo, New York, and that's got a really fun cast. Mm -hmm. The poster art's really cool. Thank you, Leonora, for reminding me. And then another I'll one. Get a work wife. <laughs> You're my work wife and my lover. Yeah. And then another film, the independent horror genre, where Leonora and I aren't looking to just do horror mm -hmm. films, but that's what they've been so far. And now Leonora has some very exciting news about her do film. I? No, I you do. And it all. <laughs> First of all, I can't even remember all those films that we did or any of the titles. That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the only thing that I, I do have a lot of stuff going on, but the only thing that I, I want to plug besides all of what Nancy Ann did is I'm really excited. i um, about to shoot Blood on the Bleachers, a Chase oh, yeah. Dudley heard about film. That. Yes, a Chase Dudley film with Lisa Wilcox. Um from Nightmare on Elm Street 4 and 5, and a wonderful up-and-coming actress, Ariana Harris, <clears throat> that is just fantastic, has a film called Broken Innocence Out, which is also Chase. Anyways, um, we are shooting that in Kentucky in July, and it's a 90s-inspired scream um, movie, and it's extremely well-written because I read a lot of horrible films and <laughs> scripts i mean and this mm -hmm. is really really good so i'm really excited about it sounds good blood on the bleachers yeah excited, do you guys know when like the dates for these movies that come out does anybody know that we haven't even <laughs> filmed it yet <laughs> so, i know like that it's three weeks i i no 
not not yet. The Blood on the Bleachers, I'm sure 2025. I'm sure for most of the films that we just discussed. Yeah. yeah. Right, Nancy? And Nancy Ann's better at, well, almost everything than me, but. <laughs> no, Leonora is better at everything. Um, I, don't I know. So. Uh, I know our the sequel to the Woodman that's that is out now, free on Tubi. The Forge Creek recordings with Michael Berryman um, will be coming out in 2025. We haven't shot that yet. We shot that down in Atlanta, Georgia. Like I said, Tahoe Joe Two's on the POV yeah. horror app, and then yeah, Leonora's Blood on the Bleachers, like she said, would be 2020. Mm -hmm. 2025 and then so my two the only ones are coming out in film festivals and then it'll roll out from there and then so I'll keep both Leonora and I will keep you guys updated on Instagram and Facebook and then another film of mine Blood and Breakfast that'll be out in October of 2024 okay so Killer Pizza yeah and then I think the the ones that Leonora her, I'm repeating myself, but yeah, Blood on the Bleachers 2025, her, that's Leonora's film, mm -hmm. which I'm very excited about. <laughs> and she's going to kick right, ass in it. <laughs> yeah. So now going into Scream, because that's mostly what you guys are pretty much known yes, for. Yes, let's, let's do it. The first question is, what was it like working with Wes Craven on set? Amazing. Um, I had a lot of time with him. Nancy Ann and I both did. Mm -hmm. um, Nancy Ann did work with him. Well, she has her story, which she's told. I think you were there that day at the cult. But I got to spend time with him, you know, on set and off set and went to his house for dinner. He had a dinner. And so I got to spend just time with him in different ways. And he was really wonderful and yeah. so nice. And um, I guess we've talked about it so many different times in so many different ways, but he really felt like he had control and knew what he wanted. But then at the same time, um, gave an environment where we were allowed to kind of creatively express. Mm -hmm. So it was like not a controlling environment. Cause I've been around a lot of directors and sets where it's like, yeah. you just felt like you had a little bit of freedom, but you also felt like you were looked after and I can't think of anybody or, you know, that's ever said a bad word about him. I think he's fantastic. Well, maybe Sharon Stone. <laughs> and anyway, Leonora and is a mini Sharon Stone. Right. I mean, yeah. mini, I well, Sharon so Stone lucky. is a, yeah, Leonora is a mini Sharon Stone. But no, yeah. everything Leonora said about Wes Craven is just, um, just you're so. You're not going to get you're not going to get any, um, what's that horrible man's name that's rotting in jail right now from Miramax? What was his name? Harvey oh, Weinstein. Weinstein. You're never going to get any Harvey Weinstein stuff yeah. coming down the pike like <laughs> <in> 20 years. <laughs> mm. Yeah. For anyone who hasn't heard. Yeah. He just, he knew it was my first movie. He just was very, I mean, gentle with me. So, but he just was, he knew what he wanted. He was. She was just really kind to me and but but very direct also like when we were doing our close-ups in the bathroom mm -hmm. scene, he would for Leonora's close-ups, he would remove her mirror and put the camera up where the mirror was. And then the yeah. same for my close-ups. And when he put the camera up to be where my mirror was, I was doing my makeup and Wes came into the bathroom and he said, Nancy Ann, you look grotesque. It looks like you're uh -huh. playing to a Broadway theater of like a thousand people. And he had a little smirk on his face because he yeah. knew I'd come from theater. And so he just was so, I, I just learned it was a crash course being on the screen set um, and learning from him. And he just had a great little sense of humor and twinkle in his eye. And, and he did have a twinkle in his eye. He really did. He was cheeky. I yeah. remember. I remember at the rap party, we were at that like jazz club. And then we all ended up in a hotel room back at the Doubletree Inn, like all Did of us, the cast and crew. I'd had too much alcohol <laughs> and I wasn't a cigarette smoker, but I was somehow I was smoking cigarettes and Wes Craven came up and he was like, can I have a cigarette? And because I was so drunk, I was like, how do I in my head? I was like, 
how do I, I wasn't even aware I was smoking a cigarette, let alone had a pack of cigarettes. And I was like, sure. But yeah, he just was, yeah, cheeky. He had a cheeky, fun sensibility about him. And yeah. Wow. That's really, cool. really, and really was sad. Yeah. When he passed away, because yeah. he just was, yeah, so full of life and just, there's no one like him mm -hmm. at all. That's that's really cool. So you guys got to spend time with the cast a lot, like Nev, David, Courtney, and all of them. You guys got to spend some time with them off camera. Leonor, Leonora, way more than me, so she can. She, okay. yeah, Le yeah. I don't want to put. I don't want to put Leonora. Well, on I mean, the it's no secret. Skeet and I live together, so, and I, you know, I was I had gone to seventh grade, you know, school with David Arquette when I was little. So yeah, we hung out. All of us did. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's very Yeah. And Matthew Lillard is just as fantastic as everyone thinks. Mm -hmm. Nev is, I couldn't say one bad thing about her. I mean, she was a sweetheart. And Courtney was, I mean, exactly, like, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? What you see is what you get. She was just so cool and chill. She came to my trailer, knocked on the door. Mm -hmm. She's like, "It's hey, it's Courtney." Sat with me for like four hours, so she really is everybody's friend. She invited me to to go see Friends be shot, um, recorded. Okay, so I did that at a different time. Uh, just nice people. Just everybody mm -hmm. was really cool. There wasn't a there wasn't a diva in the in the group. Not even mm -hmm. Rose. Rose was good. <laughs> They, I remember Leonora was so, because I was new to the West Coast lead, and I know I always say this, but if, if it weren't for Leonora, the, the experience still would have been amazing and magical, but she welcomed me in to her movie world, Leonora, and at the rap party, like, I showed up, she and Skeet showed up to the party, everyone was kind of paired off, Skeet and Leonora, Courtney Cox, and David, David Kett, Matthew, and Nev, and I showed up by myself and Leonora scooped me up and sat me with all of them. And um, I scooped her up. <laughs> she, <laughs> she put me on her back yeah. and her baby Bjorn. No, but it won't, you know, I, it was just, I was definitely a fish out of water and, and it just, yeah, everyone was so nice. At one point, I remember after the band finished playing, David Arquette got up on the little stage and was emceeing mm -hmm. and, Courtney Cox put her hair in a ponytail and started playing the drums. And mm -hmm. Nev was like doing like flamenco dance movements. <laughs> and I remember after they kind of, I mean, and they were just riffing and having fun. And when Courtney came off stage, I was just like, oh, you were really good on the drums. And she was like, oh, no, I, I'm paraphrasing. But she was like, I was really off my game tonight. And she just like what Leonora was saying. I mean, Leonora became. Yeah, she was my favorite. Her. But yeah, yeah, she just. I'm hearing stories you've never told tonight, Dimitri. You're lucky. Really, I've, I've <laughs> never heard this flamenco drumming story. <laughs> and I've never heard the West Craven cigarette story <laughs> really? in 26 years. <laughs> this is but yeah, new material, girl. <laughs> new material. Well, I will mm -hmm. say, just on the, I know I mentioned on the rap party. What made me the rap party was so fun. Yeah, every it it did feel all like I remember summer camp. Is Rose kissing me. That's all I remember. I, which <laughs> tur which kiss. turns me on so much. Rose and Leonora together. No, she kissed my shoulder. We were dancing. Oh. That oh, was she... literally all I remember of that night. And you have like the best details. <laughs> Thank um, God you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you have but you have so many other great stories that I just I mean because you were up there on the set. Um, uh, I mean, you were there for pretty much all of the filming of it, but yeah, it just, it was like summer it felt like a, a, you know, being at summer camp. I and wish we could go back into that time of life because the world is like crazy right now. I don't want to get into all that, yeah. but it was an idyllic kind of slice of history. And when people are nostalgic about the movie, that are our age and now they have children and now all their children are into it and so on and so forth. 
it's captured like a certain period of time in the 90s, but that I'm I'm proud to be a part of. And also that's just sweet, you know? Yeah. Um, and it really was that vibe. I mean, you know, we didn't have huge parts in the movie, but and we weren't there all the time, but we were there. And it really did feel like what it felt like when you watched it. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Did you guys like know like how successful this franchise would be like after the first? Oh, like, yeah. I knew we would be doing this podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, did Hell you guys no. Did you There's guys no know? Way. Like, I mean, yeah. if you think of it, how, Nancy and we were, because we get to see each other a lot, which is great. So we were in Texas last two two weeks ago, and I think we were we were talking about this. Um, if uh, there's like nine billion, how many people are there in the world? Nine billion. <laughs> Something. And the fact that we got to be, I mean, the first, the, the, the original cast of, you know, the first scream is very small. It's not a big cast. And the fact out of 9 billion and 5 trillion movies and all this horror that, that we got to be in the first scream is it's pretty epic. It's, I mean, it's, it doesn't get lost on me. We absolutely had no idea. Yeah. The only thing that I thought about was that Wes was so successful and that he was, you know, the king of the horror genre. So I was like, this is going to be good. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't privy to conversations that I now know about that he was having with, say, the costume designer. And his thinking was, don't put them in things that are so trendy that it can you can tell what period it is. Put put them in outfits that are timeless. Yeah. And so stuff like that has really worked for the fact that it's 26 years later and we're still talking about it. But hell no. Nancy Ann, did you know? <laughs> no, I mean, I remember. No, I mean, everything crazy. Everything Leonora said is the exactly you took the words right out of my mouth. But yeah, I remember reading the script in my little apartment in the valley with my you know, that I shared with the roommate. Which is so expensive right now. You'd be so lucky to have that. <laughs> no, mine was $400. Oh, no, but, I take that back. That was a good deal. <laughs> um, but no, no, but yeah, now it would be so expensive. But yeah, I, I mean, I remember I would love my script is in storage. Got, I mean, I hope I still have it. I think, I mean, all my stuff is in storage right now, but I'd love to... Now that Leonora and I are doing all these conventions, because the the title that on, was on the script back then was still a scary movie, mm -hmm. and I just rem I do remember reading it, and it was such a page turner, of course. And at the time when I read it, I didn't know who was cast, so and I didn't know about the big twist at the end with the two killers, and so just no, read don't it. tell anybody. Oh, don't <laughs> right. Spoiler alert! Don't spoil. <laughs> Well, you're you gonna have to bleed know. this part out. You don't know whose great great That's grandpa true. might be in the oh. room. <laughs> oh no, D O D. But yeah, no, I Leonora is totally right. I'm sorry, anyone who hasn't seen Scream. Okay, moving Scream. on. I think but moving everyone, on. Yeah, moving on. I think but everyone no, it, here though has seen Scream. But what? Um, I what think did you say? I was saying. I think all my fans here have seen Scream, so you're okay, probably. We're okay. Okay, good. But no, I'm so, I am very sorry. That's good but yeah, me. there was no way, when the booking agent first reached out in 2022, I mean, and Leonora can, can say what, I mean, the only other time I'd been reached out was in 2011 when Scream 4 came out. Okay. The biography channel called, and I think, they must have called. I mean, they called. They said they'd spoken to Leonora, and they said we'd love to use the bathroom scene, a snippet they of the bathroom did? scene. They said they talked to me. <laughs> yeah, I didn't talk but to this, them. this was 2011. So I'm, not, I'm but sure I didn't talk to them. <laughs> so they, what they did was they they wanted to see if we could. Well, then they told a lot. Um, if they could what use are we this, talking about right now. Oh, Dee was asking if we knew like what it would become. And I was just saying, oh. I, I had no idea then on a separate note that, that you and I would be doing, be asked to do conventions. The only yeah. time anyone ever reached out was the biography channel during Scream 4 to see if they could use a little snippet of the bathroom scene. And, you know, I said for, you know, for me, it's okay. And that they would check with Leonora. So the 
But other than that, I did they I was, do it? They did put a little clip of the scene. It's a good you can YouTube the documentaries like an hour long. You can find it on YouTube and it's like Wes and Nev talking, but there's a little snippet of our scene in the documentary. But other than that, and a few fans on Facebook Messenger reaching out for autographs, I was really shocked when the booking agent reached out and he said, there's a fan following for the bathroom girls. I was just like, come again. <laughs> and I just, I had no idea there were horror conventions. I only ever knew about San Diego Comic-Con. So I I feel like Leonora and I, just in these last two years, just realizing how I mean, I knew the franchise was a big deal, but just how meaningful it is to the fans and, and what Leonora was saying with all the newer generations discovering the film. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and just to add to her point, I've spent the majority, Nancy Ann knows this, and for no, I mean, but the majority of the past 25 years completely, sorry to the Scream fans, but just kind of ignoring Scream. Like, I remember that I was in it, but I literally never thought about it. And then when people would find out, they're like, "You're the cheer- you're the cheerleader, the bitch cheerleader from the first grade." It would I would always be kind of like, "Yeah, you yeah. know," and they would be like, "Oh, it just it never occurred to me that it was really a thing." And so I I've paid no attention to Scream. Of course, I know all the Scream movies that come out and see them, and but as far as like being engaged with the fans or anything like that, never, literally never. And then Nancy Ann got somebody asked her to do it and then she called me and she, and then I, I hung up on her because she kept she didn't keep calling but she I said stop asking me about these conventions the answer is no because Nancy Ann's like a sister but I can't <laughs> believe I hung up on you though how rude are you sure my phone didn't just disconnect but that's how <laughs> not interested I was I it wasn't even not interested I just it didn't I didn't even think about scream I really didn't it was something that I did just like all the other things that we've all done it was a period in my life. But, you know, about two years ago, right when I started doing my convention, someone overtook my Instagram and my Instagram um, was just built. It was just filled with my, my life, family stuff or whatever. So it kind of coincides right around the time I started doing scream stuff. And so now I had to open up a new Instagram and it's mostly just scream stuff. And this is the first time I've ever kind of like paid this much attention to it. And every time that we do a convention and go out and meet these incredible people, fans, you know, I'm always just like, they tell us how much Scream meant to them. And not just Scream. It could be Halloween or Friday the 13th or Sleepaway Camp. But um, I, it, it's wonderful to be able to see because you think horror movies are just like, you know, people that love horror movies are crazy. You know, can we swear? They're great. You know what? Why would you, um, it's like the people that listen to murder mystery podcasts before they go to bed. Anyways, long story short, you know, now I'm really into it and engaged in it. And it's really cool. It's the screen fans are great. Yeah. That's really awesome. I, I, on just piggybacking on what Leonora said, I never had, um, of an a fan early on had had thought about how the bathroom scene would register because yeah I didn't we we did the job in 1996 and then moved on but fans started saying that they could really identify fans who had been bullied in high school in the way that Nev Campbell's characters being you know tortured and made fun of that they could really think- in that bathroom scene identify with Nev's character and then um and that that scene carried a lot that the bathroom scene carried a lot of meaning for them and then they they just pick out lots of meaning from the scene and then how deranged and evil Leonora's cheerleader character is in the best way because Leonora does an amazing job but because she's so mean the cheerleader about Nev then fans will say they like that that at least my character, the girl in bathroom, tried to at least defend Nev's character, you know, a little bit. And so just all of those little. And then I'm getting the I felt empowered by your character to let my inner bitch come out or my inner queen or 
Yeah. So yeah. So there's okay. different levels of this where it's just like what? I we didn't see any of this coming. It's so cute and fun. Do you guys did you guys have any like difficulties while shooting your scene in the bathroom? Nancy? Yeah. Um, my only <laughs> we had one difficulty. I know she did. My only difficulty was when he said I look grotesque and ha and, and, and in a good way. I mean, I mean, no, no, was... not that. The difficulty but... of the cameraman that was behind you. Or oh the yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, thank you. They would be so, interested in that. I think I was so nervous because I grew up doing professional theater, so I'd never done a movie. So everyone knows I was really, really nervous. Leonora had done. Films oh yeah, I did the big Power ninety eight with Eric Roberts. Yeah. I was a seasoned actress. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> you were, <laughs> but you knew how to be on camera. Yeah, and, oh, yeah. and your whole and your whole family behind you, you and your family. <laughs> but um, but yes. Yeah, so they West didn't like that my bathroom door when I exited was making a a too loud of a bam sound. Um, so West put a big a production assistant behind me in the stall, but he happened to be this tall, big guy was mm -hmm. the only one available. Is he seeing and... anybody? <laughs> Wait, what? Is he seeing anybody? <laughs> I'll send him your way. He's the one who took us to the no, Russian no, river. No, not for me. Oh, no, I have my... Oh no, I have my I we well, I have my gent my boy. Not literally. I'm just kidding. Go on with the story. <laughs> oh, not <laughs> I'm so dumb, y'all. I'm so dumb. Uh, but anyways, so they Wes put him behind me. So the guy was straddling the toilet in my stall. And since it was a really shallow stall, the guy had to hold me <laughs> to me laugh it just makes me think he's like a bit he's like like yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so I'm then like, when it was okay. my turn to come out and say as i exit what would sydney want with steve she has her own bubble but boy from billy then right before that the production guy you know lets go of my collar and i come out and so it's very hard That's a for puppet me. on a chariot <laughs> <laughs> wait what uh, I, that didn't make sense i said like a puppet on a chariot <laughs> <laughs> a chariot no, but like the but Mary Poppins. Yeah. yeah. So it was just hard to like then come out and make it look natural of the bathroom. And then it I look knew natural. That, yeah. To, like you have your mark, you hit your mark on the floor, but, but then, so they had the marks of where they wanted me and Leonora to end up at the sink. But then as, as we were putting on our makeup and Leonora with her lipstick and me leaning forward doing my makeup, I guess we were leaning too far forward. So they put plywood on Leonora's sink and a piece of plywood on my sink and then dangling red tape. Well, so that if we hit the plywood, plywood with our stomachs, we would know we were leaning too far forward. And then they had dangling red tape. So in our eye lines, so that if we to make sure to stay behind the red tape. So for me, I just was like, so there nervous. was a lot of technical stuff and none of which I remember. But now that you're mentioning it, because I go into like a zone, I, you know, my zone I go into. But now that you're mentioning it, there were a lot of technical little aspects that we had to um, not fuck up. And for for me, um, the reason I have no memory of any of this is because when I go into my zone, if I remember what I was doing, I wasn't in the moment. So it's so not that Nancy Ann wasn't, but I did have that long monologue and I had to get through that. Wes had me do that as many times as I wanted over and over again. So I had that one moment where you weren't even interacting or interplaying with me. So I'm glad because I think because of that, you remember some of that stuff more. And I think if it had been reversed and you had the monologue and I could have taken in more, but I was just so engrossed in, I mean, I know for the fans out there, like it's a tiny scene, it's a small scene, but don't forget Kevin Williamson wrote that scene first. And that's how he sold the movie to Miramax because it set the tone for the genre. And as everybody knows, 
it kind of bursted out and changed, you know, the game for horror. So yeah. that was an incredibly important scene with some incredibly, as we know, 26 years later, memorable dialogue. I mean, just even the bubble butt boyfriend, like forget <laughs> the monologue. It, the whole thing was written so perfectly. So I don't remember a lot because I wanted to nail it and get every single word. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. And like, I know there's a lot of pressure when Kevin was writing the script and everything, because during the 90s, apparently horror was like falling at that time. Like there weren't yeah, the movies. horror was dead. <laughs> exactly. So then he really wanted to like bring it up, you know, and like well, he movie. did do that. He did. And now it's yeah. where we are now. And he's now directing the seventh movie. So like. It's, it's really awesome to hear. And that, that is incredible and really, really exciting for me, mm -hmm. for the fans, for me as a viewer, um, just to feel and s there's going to be some sort of impact his directing yeah. has. So that's going to be yeah. exciting. I feel like I he's the closest to Wes Craven. So, you know, they were really close. Right, but his own total individual. But yes, I, I know what you mean. But yeah, Powerhouse. Uh -huh. Good taste in bloom, but not, yeah. I yeah. agree with you. Were you guys? And maybe you, guys... you one day. Aren't you a little director? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I can. Not little. You're not little. <laughs> <I know. laughs> did you get, were you guys ever like, did you guys ever meet Kevin Williamson or no? You just like heard about I him. haven't. I, I have not personally. Nancy. Nancy. Nope. Neither. I would I. love to, but I haven't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of weird, I guess. Yeah. How I got Scream, which is a whole another time uh, other story but my friend who who kind of started the ball rolling for me julie pleck plec was Wes craven's assistant she uh for the first scream and then she went on to be the associate producer for the really nice movie. gal yeah and so she she became uh really close with kevin williamson and they went on to be writing partners on other TV shows and have so I've heard great things about Kevin just I haven't met him yeah face to face um and have had other friends who I think worked on a show of his called Wasteland um uh, 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 as writers on a that was a TV show from a long time ago but um but yeah her I mean always have heard wonderful things and I don't know if this is a I had heard, and people can double check me, that he wrote Scream, that his car, this is what I heard, so it's embarrassing to say if it's not true, but that his car was going to, about to be repossessed and that he banged out the script for Scream like super fast in order and got it sold right away. Like that was the impetus to- It sounds good. I know Sylvester Stallone wrote Rocky in like 30 minutes. No way. No, I wrote it in three days, but like 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> That's like three days isn't Sometimes a lot. Sometimes it time. comes out like that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes. And I could be wrong about that story, but that's the story I've heard. But, but, um, but yeah, the premiere that like Kevin Williamson would have been at the rap party in the premiere, but there's always so much yeah. going on. And, but, um, but yeah, if, if they, if he ever brings back the just me and Leonora, you know, you never know. You never then. know. Cause there and was a lot of, really um, yeah, there was a lot of like issues with the screen seven before, like last year going on and they lost their director. They lost their lead cast and everything. No one knew where it was going to go. You know, people were worried for it, but then, you know, Nev Campbell is now starring in the movie with her kids possibly which is really cool and now kevin williamson is coming back so i'm very happy about that you know and i think a lot of people are because he was close to wes craven and now they're he's probably going to do something really cool with it and i have so much respect to for nev and i feel like they're taking care of everybody's baby you know something mm -hmm. fell through unforeseen circumstances um and i think what i get from that is just it's really cool and beautiful like She's still looking after everybody and, you know, and, and, uh, and doing this. I think it's cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm it's... into it. I'm into it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, for me, I know there are different camps out there, but for me, for me, 
it's not Scream, if it's not Nev Cam, if it's not Sydney's character. I love, like, for Halloween, I never saw, like, I saw the first two Halloweens. I never saw the, not that I wouldn't be interested in seeing all the Rob Zombie Halloweens, but for Halloween, I like to Jamie see Lee that Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis character and the, and the arc of it's her like character. the icons, the icons of the Jamie franchise. Lee Curtis. Well, and watching them grow older and, and yeah. what that is my final girl, Jamie Lee Curtis. And I got to hang out with her in real life several really? times. You yeah, did. don't be jealous. <laughs> I am jealous. But no, that's I love with Sydney. Like for me, <laughs> I'm I'm so glad that that Nev is back and and I I mean I would want to keep watching Scream just to follow that and Sydney character. The Scream franchise elevated and where it deserves to be in the universe and that's what I mean they they're still taking care of the Scream family. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, it's not it's not going downhill. It just seems to me to keep getting better and I'm not I just so saying too. that. I'm really not just saying that. It that's what it feels like. And we're out there on the, you know, front lines and scream is just, people are just as stoked about it as ever. I and think, they keep, making, they yeah, keep making cool shit from it. So I, I feel they should all really be proud of themselves. Mm -hmm. We have a little small part we play in it and it's fun to just be a part of the universe, you know? Yeah. Cause you're in, you're in such a big franchise, you know, it's like a little small role is something really big, you know? Right. Yeah, it, it is. It is. I feel like but we're not keeping it going and Nev is. And I have mad respect for that. So. Mm -hmm. I feel I, like yeah. after Scream 4 came out, there was, I think, like 11 years until Scream 5 came out. During that period, Scream dropped. It wasn't as popular. But then Scream 5 came out 2022, you know, with social media and everything. It just got more popular and popular. And then 6 and now 7, you know, it's just it's back. It's resurrected everything you'll learn because you're young but you know um everything has like a i don't mean to be like i'm not down downgrading because no. you're young only young in the sense because you have a very old soul you're extremely bright but young in the sense of maybe not understanding cycles you know so it's like so if it had it's whatever you know whatever it's back now sometimes things need to take pauses and breaks and mm -hmm. you know it's okay yeah. and sometimes it comes back and sometimes it doesn't and so it's really great that it has come back yeah what, what would you say is the reason that people are so interested still after all these years in scream i As think i think it's because um well in scream 5 obviously there was like the new main character sam carpenter and i think newer audiences who haven't really gotten attached to the last four movies they watched scream five and they became attached to the new main character like a teenager oh, so it like hooked a new generation yeah. of people like and then those people then went back and watched the beginning yes. or like example oh. like teenagers in 1996 they became attached to sydney right kids in 2022 are now attached to sam you know yeah and now they're introduced to the well, whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. And with social media so, now, I mean, it's more popular. And what's also cool is that both of those sets mm -hmm. have their own person. Yeah. So, but it's the same franchise. Yeah. This is very oh, cool. That, that, what you both just said, that is very cool. I was, so, <laughs> I was so, I was so, you both are going there. I was so, I don't like change. So I was so attached to, no, Sydney, but the grand inevitable you i know to, and i'm so bad with, down on i know i'm so bad with accepting change but no but i do see what you both just said about screen five and the sam carpenter character i get yeah i get i hadn't thought about it in that way with the younger generation mm -hmm. attaching to her the sam character. and that's like their own thing so they don't have to feel like they're taking their parents thing yeah yeah, yeah. and then they then they watch the the past movies from 1996 and then they love Sydney too, you know? So it's like, I think it's so cool. Yeah. And, and it's also bringing everybody together. Scream mm -hmm. is, is like, is better than like that. It's better. It's like world peace. Yeah. <laughs> Scream is uniting everyone. Yeah. 
people Gets the song like, board for election yeah. year. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it is kind of sweet. I mean that. I really mean it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. There's a lot of nice people. Look at you. We're talking to you. When would we have met you? We met um, Dimitri. It's Blackmore Studios, right? Yeah. We met him. He lives in New Jersey. Nancy Ann and I were doing a convention in Bastrop, the cult classic convention show. Mm -hmm. And him and his parents flew to Austin <laughs> to come to this convention. And we started chit-chatting, right? And then you can tell the rest of the story. But when would I have ever met? When would we have ever met you? And now we're all connected. I know. I and know. it's all through Scream. All through Scream. Yeah. Power of movies. It is. It Yeah, it really, the power of, I mean, yeah, it's the, Scream is the glue and the bridge. <laughs> Stop yeah. being so cheesy. And I just the bathroom feel... girls should, should enter this presidential cycle. <laughs> <laughs> and the, I'll be the cheerleaders VP running mate. <laughs> yeah. Um. And a bunch of people say that Scream is like one of the most consist consistent movies. I don't know if I said that consistent like franchises out there because you don't you usually did. see a lot of movies that come out year after year sometimes that are good. You know, they usually fall, but Scream has done the opposite. Yeah, it really is true, and it's a testament to um surrounding yourself with extremely talented people yep. and that's what scream has done mm -hmm. everybody involved in that universe is talented yeah very talented that is true but yeah that's unheard of it really is i mm -hmm. mean halloween couldn't even accomplish that oh yeah they um, have what like 13. the rocky yeah. rockies were pretty were pretty good i don't know but yeah scream yeah it's just it's one of those franchises that just keep getting better because you know i know it's so exciting I know. I know. I, I wish you guys would be in the new ones, too, because your characters are still alive. They didn't die or anything. Exactly. Well, I'm so, f them, so I'm for sure we're going to be in one of them. Could be eight, nine. I mean, it's it feels like it'll happen. Eventually. What's fun about that, that the original, the very first one is so few of us did survive Ghostface. Mm -hmm. It's me and I mean, really, it's me and Leonora. The two got the two boy pranksters in high school who dress up as Ghostface, who Henry Winkler scolds yeah. in the principal's this... office. The the girl in the video store who said asked about the name of the movie with E.T.'s mom. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, there are very few few of us of the smaller characters who did survive. So it would yeah. be so fun. I never had heard the term legacy character <laughs> until yeah. we started doing conventions and doing YouTube interviews That's and how much you knew this, but Nancy and I are legacy characters. We are legacy. <laughs> I mean, because technically well, you guys are We but really I, are, I but I didn't know. A legacy character. Wait, what'd you say? I was saying like a legacy character ha has to be alive throughout the movies and you guys are still in the world in the Scream universe and the lives. So you guys technically are a legacy character. Yeah, yeah, that I would never have known that term. But when somebody taught it to me, I thought it was well, I thought it was really sweet. And and yeah, um, I think they were saying the Inora cell phone now. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? I would like to be called Sir Leonora cell phone. <laughs> I want to be. I want to be Dave I'll Nancy be Ann. <laughs> well, I'm a legacy character. <laughs> I'm a legacy. <laughs> legacy Leonora. Legacy Leonora. It is kind it, to be honest with you, because then I started to get into directing theater and done different things with my, you know, career. I wrote a book, Yoga Fangirl, um, you know, hint, hint. But um, it is kind of weird to be famous for this little tiny part that we played. It, it is, not going to lie. Universally. I mean, we were at the gas station where they shot Texas Chainsaw Massacre, randomly ran into a woman who stopped and literally did the entire monologue back to us and all of Nancy Ann's dialogue. Mm -hmm. So it's, it is weird. It's just weird. Yeah. But she knew that girl, I think Leonora has it, has it on her social media that girl at the gas station had leonora's mom the movements everything like yeah. perfect and it was just a random <laughs> thing yeah, the... yeah. Didn't, didn't that happen um when you guys were like 
the day after the convention because I remember Yeah, seeing something it did. in the stories. Yeah. And it was just random. Leonora, how I, I still can't It remember did happen. how how did we were exiting the gas station and that girl, how did that And they were they were exiting and they were taking photos and I looked at her and all I said was, Do you want my I don't think I said autograph. I probably said, Do you want me to sign something? And then she, I didn't say who I was or, and I wasn't wearing my cheerleading outfit, but her eyes went into the back of her head and then, she went, <laughs> yeah. and then she started the monologue right away. I made her stop. Cause then I got my camera. I'm like, I'm videoing this. I made her start it over again, but, but yeah, yeah. I mean, what I'm saying to you is that within this horror community and this, you know, scream world, it, it's, it's been a very honorable, but but very um, weird thing to be well known for. That's mm -hmm. what I'll say. <laughs> yeah. And I was going to say for scream. It's, it's different. It's unusual. <laughs> I love, I mean, our characters, Leonora in the credits cheerleader. And then I love my little character, literally girl in bathroom. And I think people always say, Oh, do you all have names? And I'm so glad with girl in bathroom that I didn't have a name, like a cute fan who's become a friend years ago was like, oh, I decided your name was Stacy. And I was like, okay, Stacy it is. And but I laugh with the fans. I'm like, I'm glad that Kevin Williamson didn't give us names because if I if my character were named Stacy, people would be like, well, who the fuck was Stacy? But when when you say, oh, I was the girl in bathroom and Leonora says she was the cheerleader, it's quite quite obvious yeah. who we were. But I was gonna say Something what was cute with the fans when Scream Five came out with 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 that Sam Carpenter character, people were like, "Who should the mom be?" And there was a camp of fans who wanted it to be Leonora's character. Yeah, that's there what were I was a camp thinking. of fans who wanted it to be my character. Uh -huh. Knowing what what putting the puzzle pieces together, and yeah. but now I obviously with her character being gone that storyline won't continue but i thought it was really fun to see how how excited the fans were to figure out who was going to be revealed mm -hmm. as that mother character so that was a fun kind of a fun thing to see never say never you don't know the direction that it's gonna go in and it, they, sam yeah. can come back sometime in the future You're right I mean, they, that's true once the yeah. once the climate settles down and i you know, I won't get into political things, um, um, you know, to that extent, but never say never. And we yeah, could you... be seeing people again or not seeing people again, but we could be seeing people again. Yeah, you're right. I didn't even think about that, but that doesn't exactly with. Yeah, exactly. Her, her care that the Sam Carpenter character doesn't have to, you know, quote unquote, die like that storyline could and yeah, the bottom continue. line is Nancy Ann and I would love to bring our legacy characters back <laughs> at any time. No pressure. Scream 8 would be great. Scream yep. 7 squeeze us in. But before I'm dead and buried, I think we will be in another Scream. We are manifesting it. Mm -hmm. And I would have never said that before, but I've just met so many fans that want it. And at this yeah. point, become kind of like a cult little tiny following of the bathroom girls and I'm here for it because why not? We've embraced it. <laughs> if someone can reach out to Kevin Williamson and just tell him, get the exactly. bathroom girls back, you know? And I do, fans do always ask and I say, you know, Kevin they Williamson's do. on Instagram. And so they send me, they're like, we just contacted him. And, and I they say, write what? scripts and they write the parts out. They, yeah. I had a guy send me something yesterday. He was like, can you please check it? Like he wants me to check the grammar. Like he wrote our characters. He rewrote the scene. He wrote what we were doing before he wrote what we were doing after. And it was really great. I mean, I, people are like into it. Yeah. People make dolls of us. It's, it's like a, it's a very, it's like a little minor subset, like little cult following for the bathroom girls it's cute yeah. <laughs> this this artist guy just i haven't gotten to talk to Leonora, but i know she's seen him made these i cool, love them. what what len and alan were yeah. giving out d that you had Those are classic, oh, yeah. the baseball yeah. cards and artists made them 
for me, I mean, we didn't ask this artist to do it. He, Mm -hmm. he just is so talented with, with so So many talented artists do stuff for us. Yeah. Yeah. And if we end up selling their stuff, you know, we do a, a, a percentage swap type thing, but, um, or sign stuff for them or do whatever they want, you know? And yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. How everyone's so... I'm really excited. I know we got to try to wrap things up yeah. and talk about what we have going on. Do you, do you have any more questions? Um, not really. We have eight minutes and 50 seconds left. Okay. Well, I was just going to say, um, Nancy Ann and I, I personally took about a four month break from conventions. I got kind of burned out and other personal things, but we're back out there again. And so next weekend we will be at nickel city comic-con in Buffalo, oh. New York, June yep. 28th, 29th and 30th. Mm-hmm. You better come out for that. We'd love to see you. I Buffalo is not too far. Um, and then, uh, and then Nancy Ann has something else in July, which she will tell you, I, I shoot my movie. And then we have something in August in Fresno, Nancy yeah. Ann, what's it yep. called? Uh, Haunt Mare Expo in Fresno, and it's August 17th and 18th. Yeah. I got to tell you, the artwork and the graphics on that and the lineup is incredible. But what I'm, and I'm excited about all of them, but I'm really, really excited because we're also doing something that neither one of us has ever done. And we're, we're going to be in cosplay in our outfits and they're recreating a whole room, but it's a haunted mansion in Michigan. Tell them. Yeah, it's so it's called Awaken and it's in I have the dates here. It's called Awaken, just Awaken and it's October 18th, 19th and 20th and it's in Leslie, Michigan and it's this really amazing um company Brian McVeigh and Jennifer McVeigh and then their business partner. It's a haunted um it's a big warehouse and it's a haunted attraction. And they take you through different. It's I, it's I went a haunted house on steroids. Yeah, yeah, it's my. I'm not it's name dropping. It's not a convention. It's an experience. It's an mm-hmm. yeah. You're going to be part of the experience. And the weekend before us, who's it going to be? It's, ghost. So the, it'll be Lee Waddell, the ghost face okay. in the first scream, who kills yeah. Drew Barrymore faction. But they're doing yeah. yeah him lee one weekend and then the two of us but it's a really great haunted attraction yeah so i'd love for the fans to like start making plans for that we hang out with you it's going to be so fun yeah it's going to be really really fun and and, take place again uh it's in leslie michigan okay and spelled spelled leslie l-e-s-l-i-e i I don't know what the closest airport is to it um my I don't friend, I'm, where I'm told. <laughs> I'm not name dropping uh Tony Moran, who people name dropper. <laughs> total. I'm gonna pick up that I dropped something on the ground. He's, but he's it's shacked up with Mike Myers. I'm, I'm shacked up with Tony. But the reason I bring him up is he's done Awaken twice before. He did it last year and a few years prior. And I got to be with him last year just oh, and Tony's gonna be at all our conventions coming up. Yeah, so Tony, Tony, yeah. Tony Moran, Michael Myers. Billy Zane will be there. And Billy Zane, who is... I love him. The, Billy Zane was so... I chiller with him last year. I have a crush on him. Yeah, I want Billy Zane and Leonora to be a couple. But he was, Billy Zane was so nice to me and Leonora at he Chiller. He talked to me at my table. <laughs> he, he approached Leonora at her table and... Yeah. He did so and many- he bought an autograph even though I offered to him for free. <laughs> yeah, he came up he came up I was selling many 11 by 17 screen posters and Billy Zane came over like he was talking to Leonora for a long while and and, yes, he and was. Out, out of the corner of my eye I was like, "Oh, that guy, I didn't know who it was cuz Leonora and I don't fan out over people, but I saw this guy talking at her table. And then he came over and started talking to me. And again, we don't fan out, but he looks the exact same. By the way, Dimitri, I had no idea who he was. Mm -hmm. I knew he was, you know, obviously famous because right next to us, Richard Dreyfuss was signing and he was on the other side of Richard Dreyfuss. So I knew he was um, in the Titanic because I saw the posters and everything. Mm -hmm. But if he came up to me, I wouldn't have been able to tell you his name. 
Yeah. I can now though, <laughs> but he was so sweet. I mean, so sweet. And he picked out, I, there were two fans at my table, like a father and son. And so Billy came over and he was scanning like the stuff on my table and he picked out the screen poster and he said, um, Oh wait, how did he do it? Leonora? Oh, Oh, he asked he us for autograph. I think he was getting it for his daughter or for somebody. I think. Yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of people are screen fans that you wouldn't think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was just really, he was really sweet, and and he's yeah. going to be. I mean, really, really nice, and he'll be at Nichols. I'm sure, he won't even remember me, but I remember oh, him. He was really nice. He'll remember you because you're very beautiful and personable <laughs> and lovely. Well, that sounds very exciting. Um, but yeah, it's got, there's going to be a lot of, I'm trying to see what other, we do yeah, have, there's going to be a lot. Yeah. And we'll um, see wrap people. It up. Thank you so much, you guys. Yeah. Le and find Leonora Shelfos on Instagram and Facebook and, and that's where you can find us and me. Thank you for having yeah. us. You're welcome. And he even has a convention in July. What's the other one? Um. Okay. One in July in Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah. And and we'll post and we've got and we'll post um we'll, we'll post our stuff. We will meet everybody. Thanks yes. you guys. Love you all. Yes. Make sure Good you guys all go to their conventions. Thanks for coming. Bye D. Bye. Bye. Bye.